more than surfaces, we have building materials in Archicad. Building materials look at all the basic different building materials we can get these in Archicad and of course we can make all of our own as well. We can create new ones or we can edit the existing ones. To any building material we add a fill and a surface material. We increase the priority of these building materials because a building material on its own isn't that valuable but when we go to something like a composite what we're doing with composites, let's find one here, is we're multiplying the amount of building materials and therefore we're multiplying the amount of fills, we're multiplying the amount of surfaces. So we he see here that we're making a wall that's not dumb by any means, it's now got plaster on one side, block work or we could change that to brick work if we wanted to, it's got a cavity, more block work, brick work, plaster, which means each of these has a weight, each of these has an embodied energy, each of them has a surface, each of them has an insulation value. And we're able to put parts of our buildings together that are very, very intelligent. We see here that this wall, what's this made up of? Option, element, attributes, composites. A brick veneer wall is brick, a cavity, a timber stud, and a plasterboard wall lining. And if we go into each of those settings, which are building materials, again, each of these has a different intersection priority, has different physical properties, has a different, in this case, surface, has a different fill. And this creates documentation, it creates visualization, and it creates BIM modeling. And this allows us to create complex models. In this case, the wall, however, is still just flat. It's a very regular sort of wall. Let's put the um, real materials back on. So I'll, I'll turn off the overrides. And it'll take that back to my building materials. And if I zoom right in, we see that the great thing about this is the cavity is actually transparent. So this is one object, right? This is a wall, just one element. We drew this, but it's made up of all these different facets. And if we were to cut a section through it, we will see that in section, it actually is broken up into these objects as well. And we can click on each of them we can draw to them, we can use them as reference points and these are set up very dimensionally accurate for a real project. So very very beneficial again for visualization and for documentation of our model. But finally that might not be enough because a wall itself is, is limited to what it can be. Then we also have our Profile Manager and our Profile Manager allows us to create custom profiles or different shapes. So if I look at what that is, gutter and fascia, it's creating a, let's go to my beam, creating a profiled object and this is editable just like any other beam but it's made up of clever elements of building materials. If we have a look at what that is, profile manager, choose our gutter and fascia and then edit the profile. This is a 2D extrusion so it has different elements, it has lines, it has fills and those fills we add materials to, building materials, and that building material therefore will work and make sense in real life. And we can change those building materials to be whatever material and whatever surface color we want. So there's so much possibility. Again, this is a lot of work involved in setting these up. Some are already set up for us, we see, but most of them aren't. Uh, 
for any project, we, we might need to model these in order to create these elements. Of course, we can use objects, and we could use just dumb elements. We could draw it with slabs, we could draw it with other bits and pieces, or we could just draw it with lines. But the more we model, the more we create BIM, the more that becomes useful for future projects and giving us information. There's more time investment, but it, it does pay off in the end.